you're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good morning. Happy Friday. We are taking a live look outside this morning. You can see it's clear. It is cold and there is a flood watch in effect with lots of rain expected to come our way tomorrow. Jackie will have more on that coming up in just a minute. But again, happy Friday. It is now six o'clock on the dot. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Tania Wright. Good morning to you. I'm Corey James. Shanika is course monitoring the traffic this morning. Hopefully it's not too bad for you, but she's going to get you out the door in just a second. Jackie, though, she's keeping an eye on that forecast and mm -hmm. uh, some rain moving in tomorrow should be a pretty big storm, but hopefully tonight things are relatively calm for people who want to go out. Yeah, I mean, it's overnight tonight that we could see the leading edge of that rain pushing in. So I think about 2 to 3 a.m. is really when we start to notice some of that rain pushing in. So when the bars close. Yeah, exactly. So when everyone's heading home. Bring your umbrella. Exactly. <laughs> Towards the end of the night. Temperatures right now, it's a cold start. We're seeing those into the 20s and 30s. Currently 36 in D.C. 29 in Hagerstown. We're 25 right now in Martinsburg. 23 right now in Manassas. That wind chill, though, a little bit colder. Feel like it's just 30 in D.C. 25 in Hagerstown. Flood watch, that's for the D.C. metro area for that system tomorrow. Goes into effect at 2 a.m., continues through 2 p.m. Saturday. It's likely that that system wraps up mid to late afternoon, but right now all clear watching that system and the one off towards the north. Those combined and I'll bring us all that rainfall that is, is, is expected tomorrow. More details on that coming up. Shanika, how are those roads? All right, thank you, Jackie. Good morning. Top of the six o'clock hour. We're in Northern Virginia. This is the Tyson's Corner area. The inner and outer live right near seven. You are looking good. You can see the movement even with that uh, road work going on in the area. No problems right now. So let's head out to Maryland. Off of 95 Powder Mill Road, you are dealing with uh, closure because of a serious crash that so you got uh, right between Beltsville Drive and Cherry Hill Road. It is closed. You can see the stretch of purple if you look closely. So do use caution in this area. Thank you, Shanika. A Hagerstown apartment building has extensive damage, as you can see, after this massive fire that happened yesterday evening. Yeah, firefighters are no longer battling that intense fire, but you can see those flames and even the thick smoke just pluming in the air there. It was given to this video rather given to us from a DC News Now viewer, Chris Garner. The fire, though, took place on Oak Hill Avenue. This is near the north end of the city. Take a look at this video, though. This is another look just two blocks away from the Hagerstown fairgrounds. Officials say it all started around 630. Right now, it is not known if anyone was in the building when the fire broke out. That, though, has neighbors concerned. I have friends that live up there, so like I'm just praying for them, make sure that everything's safe. The firefighters went up to the top and then the flames started shooting out the other side of the building, so they came down as quick as they could. This is a developing story. We will bring you the latest both on air and online at DCNewsNow.com. And in Virginia, a state of emergency in Page County as firefighters work to put out the wildfires across the Shenandoah Valley. Officials say people had to evacuate from their homes. They say five homes have already been destroyed in Strasburg and more than 400 acres burned. We spoke with a person who's been helping neighbors. She says the situation is devastating. I feel for the families, you know, and what they're losing because, I mean, there's really no control over it. As long as the people are safe, you know, you may lose a home, but at least you have each other. Officials say a large fire north of Strasburg is now contained. Right now, there is a fire ban in place in Shenandoah National Park. All right, well, we are learning some new details this morning on that shooting that happened in northern Virginia involving three teens, leaving one of them dead on Wednesday. And police have now identified the suspect. DC News Now's Candace Cole is live this morning in Fairfax County. And Candace, police are releasing that photo, hoping that people will see it and be able to help them arrest that suspect. That's right, guys. Uh, Fairfax County police have identified 18 year old Ishmael Cruz del Cid as a suspect who shot and killed another teen after a fight broke out outside of the extended stay hotel in Herndon. What happened on Wednesday, uh, police say that del Cid left his car there at the scene um, and took off on foot. They are now looking uh, for him. That manhunt still continues.
Here's more. Here's a picture of Cruz Del Cid on your screen. Police say he left his car, a Honda Civic, at the scene of that shooting on Wednesday and took off on foot. A warrant is now out for his arrest. Police say Cruz Del Cid had gotten into a fight with two other teens outside the Sinesta Extended Stay Hotel on Coppermine Road before firing at least three rounds. One teenage boy was killed. The other was able to get away. Cruz Del Cid now faces second degree murder charges and police say there's another warrant out for him for distributing cocaine. We heard from one woman who's been staying at the Extended Stay Hotel for two months. She says she's shocked by the incident. He looks like a child, honestly. Um, I know that he's 18, but your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 25. It's just crazy to me that these are kids in the suburbs. Makes me uh, wonder where the kids' parents are. And yeah, that manhunt continues on this morning. Police say if you know anything about uh, Cruz Del Cid's whereabouts or anything about that shooting incident, uh, contact them immediately. Reporting live from Fairfax County, Candace Cole, D.C. News Now. Thank you, Candace. Well, Prince George's County police are searching for a suspect in a deadly shooting. Police say the man was shot last night in the area of Randall Road and Silver Hill Road. He died at the scene. Right now, officials are working to find a motive. Anyone with any information is asked to call police. And in the district, police are asking for the public's help identifying the people you see right here in this video. Now, they're accused of robbing a business on the 4400 block of Benning Road in Northeast. Now, this happened early Wednesday morning. Police say the suspect approached two employees with a gun and demanded money. If you recognize them, you're asked to call police. And the Charles County Sheriff's Office investigating reports of a student fight club. Officials say two Maurice McDonnell High schoolers are charged with assault and robbery after attacking another student at the, in the school bathroom. They say the two then tried to steal money that they believe from the student who won in a prearranged fight on school grounds. Students allegedly pl pay, place bets on those fights. The sheriff's office is asking anyone with information to give them a call. Time right now with 606 on this Friday morning, taking a live look at the Capitol here where Congress is racing to pass a final spending package to approve its budget that could delay a government shutdown. Lawmakers right now only have until midnight to pass the bill. National correspondent Anna Warnicky reports. The 1,012 page federal spending bill was published in the early hours of Thursday morning. There was some very uh, tough negotiation. We w went through item by item in the budget in order to bring sanity to this situation. The $1.2 trillion package would fund agencies like the Department of Homeland Security and the Pentagon. We need to make sure we have a strong military and that's supported in this. It also includes more funding for child care and cancer research. Republicans and Democrats praise the bill. We'll keep the government open without cuts or poison pill riders. But now it's a sprint to the finish line. Lawmakers must get the bill to the president's desk by midnight on Friday to keep the government open. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer says he is confident lawmakers can get it done before Friday's deadline. Once the House acts, the Senate will need bipartisan cooperation to pass it. Because of the time crunch, the House is bypassing a rule that any new bill must undergo a 72-hour review period. But in the Senate, where one senator can stall a bill for days, that one senator is Utah's Mike Lee. We shouldn't be forced to rush to judgment on it. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says lawmakers should not book their flights back home just yet. We're likely to be here this weekend. That will be determined, however, by how long it stays in the House. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. And this morning, the United Nations Security Council is set to vote on a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The resolution is sponsored by the U.S. and says a stop to the fighting is, quote, imperative to protect lives. The U.S. ambassador says she is optimistic the resolution will be passed. The U.S. Security Council has previously adopted two resolutions on the humanitarian situation in Gaza. However, this is the first to ever call for a ceasefire. To March Madness now, the Maryland Terrapins are out in California preparing for their first round matchup of the women's tournament. The Terps are tipping off against Iowa State as the 10th seed, but they really needed a strong showing in the Big Ten tournament to gain some confidence, and it was something they were able to accomplish with a big win over fourth-ranked Ohio State before getting knocked out of the semifinals to Nebraska. The Ohio State win, you see that we can compete with anybody in the country. Um, you know, highly ranked 
highly ranked team, and you know they have great players on their team, um, and they're a really good defensive team. So that shows you our offense is there, and same with our defense. And then um, the Nebraska loss. I mean, talk about a tough conference, but um, I think you just use that as motivation going into the tournament. Tip off for tonight's game is 7:30, and Virginia Tech opened their tournament today as well. They take on Marshall. The Hokies come into today's matchup as a fourth seed in the tournament. However, they will be without their top player, Elizabeth Kitely. She tore an ACL in the games, the team's final regular season game, and misses the tournament for a second year in a row. And if you are looking forward to a DMV doubleheader, Virginia Tech again tips off first. Games at 3:30. The Terps tip off against Ohio State at 7:30 tonight. So good luck to them.